This is the Tuesday, December 7th edition of Slow Home Studio. My name is John Brown and this is Matthew North and in today's segment we're going to help Hector and his wife in Cincinnati analyze the floor plan of a townhouse that they're thinking about purchasing. All right, so let's look at his uh, question and he says, my wife and I are in the process of buying a townhouse. I've come across a 1,570 square foot new two-story end unit with two bedrooms and two and a half baths. It's located in an established downtown neighborhood close to my work, sounds good. I think the floor plan works pretty well for our needs, but I was hoping to get your expert opinion. Should I buy this house, Hector from Cincinnati? All right, good. Well, so we're gonna, we're gonna give you an opinion based on the livability of the floor plan. Yeah. And then uh, we'll, we'll leave the economics and, and some of the, uh, the broader house in the world questions uh, for you. I think the fact that it's actually in an established community is a big deal. And close to your work. And close to work, so we know we've got the location. And a townhouse, so it's, and a, it's a dense, so dense it's development, denser. so that's good. Right, so we've got the floor plan. This might be confusing for some people because it, uh, it's kind of a working drawing. It must be I one. I think it's the electrical plan, it yeah. looks like. So the little dots are actually uh, pot lights, and these are electrical units, and the squiggly lines are, are, are the wire that the electricians need to use, and this bubbly thing means that there's been a revision at some point. <laughs> so there's a whole bunch of stuff, but let's just try and see through that because I think, actually, Hector, from looking at this, that this is a pretty good unit. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, yep. I'm pretty, pretty impressed. So let's just walk through it. We walk in through the front door. We've got a, a foyer that's actually the landing on the stair. You know we're not a big fan of that, but I have to say it's bigger than, than normal. They've increased yep. it. This is the typical width, which would be half of the width of the, st of the stair or the width of the stair. Yeah, typically so they made it an extra two feet. Yeah, long. another foot and a half or so, so that's good. Yeah, I think that that's quite nice. Now, of course, there's no closet down, th down there, but if you notice, what they've actually done is they've, they've gotten this wall here and then they've got the wall of the closet, the wall that leads into the bathroom, and then a, a kind of arched opening or some kind of a, of a lintel opening there. And what that does is it creates this stair as kind of an, an entry condition yeah. where you can go into the bathroom and into the closet there. So I think that given the given the challenges of the, the townhouse, the the narrow lot, yeah. where, you know, all the rest, I think it actually And they're not entering well. on the parking level. No. So that's you know, that's good. So they they come up and then they come up again to the to the main floor. So I think that's good. Then if we look at the layout, we've got the kitchen that faces the front yep. and we've got the great room at the back that faces out onto a good sized deck. And then in the center, we've got a dining room, and there is, it, it looks is to me like it, there's an opening in between the two. So yeah. I think that also works fairly well, just as yeah. an overall organization. Do you agree? Yeah, I do agree. I think that the um, one thing that Hector might consider in the kitchen is maybe putting uh, an island that's also a table, rather than having a piece of furniture, because I think there is a way of putting something in there that would be a great place to kind of sit around, maybe even on two sides on the end. Yeah. So you get that sort of sense of a more... I think it would make the kitchen feel bigger, and I also think that it would be a really nice place to be able to sit at the table, um, rather, or sit at an island condition rather than sitting at the table. And then that makes sense why you'd have the dining room, um, because then the dining room can have a proper dining table, can be centered, they've got a light, they've got windows on the side, that makes sense to me. I agree, and it could, it could be as simple as just a counter height table. Ta yeah, well that's... Counter height surface with just open underneath. Yeah. And then pull some stools up. It gives you way more counter space. Or yep. you could actually, if this is one a project that's actually just being built, or you could always come back afterwards, is is actually make it an island, make it a three foot deep yep. island. And I think that's an excellent suggestion because it looks like it would fit. It, it would, does. And it would pull that down so that then this whole thing really does become a great. Picture. Yeah, and then it gives you a reason why you'd have two two dining spaces. You have one kitchen oriented space and one you know more formal dining space I think that makes sense the other recommendation that I would make if it's still possible is to see if you could maybe move that that fireplace over there I think that it would be much much better if the fireplace for the layout of the room if the fireplace was over on this side it just makes sense that you would use the sort of the depth of that powder room to also house the depth of the fireplace and That's you could right. do some built-ins your TV could go there it would just all like it would just compose like the, yeah it would just compose the whole thing and then you wouldn't have to deal with how am I going to furnish behind the bump out of the of the of the guest bath on the opposite side? Yeah, it just really it, I think that would be a really good thing. To it do. also gives a little bit more breathing room for the table because you're getting your furniture around like this, yeah. uh, and then it gives you just a little bit more space for that. And I think it's also nicer as you're coming in yeah. that you're looking at the furniture grouping yeah. rather than the back end of the furniture yeah. grouping. So let's move upstairs and have a look at, at look at that. So we're coming up the stairs here. We've got the laundry 
over on the side, over above the, the, the powder room, and then that creates a hallway into the uh, master bathroom. Ah, we've got a two bedroom. Yeah. Uh, two bedroom, two bath unit, not unlike the conversation that we had last week yep. with, uh, with Brad. And then we've got a half, uh, a half bath. Well, well it's, it's not, it's, it's got a tub. Oh, yep. hall bath, I see. Yep. And then a walk-in closet and then a kind of efficient ensuite there. Again, yep. I think it's a good layout. It is a good layout. I think that it makes sense where you would put the beds. The proportion is good on the bedrooms. I think that they, uh, by, by getting that one, the full width, other than the stair at the front is clever because you don't have a hallway, right? Like they're using the width of the of, of the stair, stair to yeah. create the. That's really clever. It's all zoned together with the laundry, so you don't have any uh, wasted space with circulation. It's very efficient. You come right into that. I think the bathroom layouts are both good. I mean, I, the only thing I would say, there's that double sink thing yeah, in the in the, really in the master. Two sinks. I you know I would I would do I would forfeit the one sink and I would want to have uh, you know a stack of drawers so I could put some stuff below there. But I do like how the fact that the one bathroom has the stand-up shower and then the other bathroom has the tub, so you get both functions like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because you really need about 30 inches there, don't you? Yeah. To be able to do that. And so this looks like it's probably five feet. So that would give you a two-foot drawer, more or less, yep. if you only have one. If you have two sinks, you're going to be standing side by side, kind of like Matt, you and I are right now, and there's not going to be any storage space. I like the fact that both the bedrooms look out, yep. one to the front, one to the back. It's nice to have that window in the, in, the, uh, in the stairwell. It's going to bring some natural light there. I'm not sure whether that linen closet's really necessary. Yeah, no. Small point. Yeah. So well, I think it's always nice to have a linen closet. It just know. it does close in. It the, does, yeah, because otherwise you could have a look down into the into the main space from above. And right. you would get more natural light coming. Yeah, you're right. Coming that in, makes sense. In from there. All right. So now looking, finishing off, just looking at the basement is is pretty basic. We've got an underdrive, two car garage, which looks it looks fairly reasonable. There's this, the uh, the entry the back entry is it's a tight. little tight yeah it? it is tight there's no there's no closet like that that part is a little bit tight I think it's a little bit so uh, fortunately this is unfinished or, or well, it's yeah. finished lower level but it's not really not particularly strongly finished I mean you could always create a mudroom the size of that and create a mudroom there that might be a yeah I would better. I would want to look know, at put doing a closet that. let me just uh, let me erase that maybe do something where we have a closet that goes across there and the door that comes in like that and then you could come in here have an entry and then go into the yeah I mean there's there enough room down there to still get a good sized room plus have a mudroom and I think the use of the, the storage for the mudroom would be really really a good idea I really I have to say though the way that they've done the parking I think is a good a good way of doing parking because they're using parking as the full width so the parking spaces aren't compromised and then they've moved the entry to the front and I think that makes a lot of sense. So I think in conclusion, we would say yes, this is actually a really well-designed Yeah, it looks really good so, and if you can do a couple of those changes, it would be even better. But even if you can't, uh, I think it's still something to, uh, to, 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 to yeah. go for. So good for you and congratulations to whoever it was that designed and built this in Cincinnati. Yeah. So thanks for watching this segment. In tomorrow's Design Minute, we're going to be looking at the kitchen in my townhouse. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.